you know, the amount of guys I've seen who come up to me in the street here, for example, I see in bars and clubs. Um, my friends who come for short periods of maybe acquaintances who know that I spend a lot of time here, they write to me maybe you know, for a coffee or something. But, uh, you know, a guy I used to hang out maybe 10 years ago in, in, in Brussels, for example, in Belgium, when I worked there as a lawyer. And it's always the same story. They get almost nowhere. Privet and greetings from a blustery, a little bit windy Kherson in the south of Ukraine. And um, welcome back to another episode of the Vodka Vodcast with me, Connor Klein. And in today's podcast, I'm going to discuss why you need to actually move to Ukraine to find a beautiful girl. All right, so I'm going to just a few things to set the parameters for today's podcast. I'm only referring to Ukraine. I'm not referring to the rest of the former Soviet Union or Eastern Europe, um, because I think Ukraine is the country where it's most pertinent that you need to move and spend a lot of time here. And then beautiful girl, I'm talking about girls who are considered beautiful in Ukraine. So, you know, if you'd use a scale of one to 10, which you never like, because it always ends up being pretty subjective, we will say, you know, at least a seven in Ukraine. That doesn't mean a seven you know, in the UK, the US, Germany, France, um, I was going to say, I just picked randomly picked Zimbabwe in my head. I know why I said Zimbabwe, but, uh, you know, Hong Kong, somewhere else in the world where women are in general, probably not as good looking. Uh, that's not what I mean. I mean, seven here, because, you know, you can come here and maybe I know someone's going to write in the comments below. Basically, I met my wife here and I didn't move here. I met her on a trip and blah, 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 blah. And she was you know, above average for the UK. Well, then she's she's not a, considered a beautiful girl here. Uh, and that's what those guys look at first anyways, biologically is visual. So uh, all that aside at the beginning, that's still, by the way, good for you if you came and you were only able to get a two back in the UK and you get a five here, then perfect. Good on you, but that's not what I'm referring to. And it's really, really pertinent. I'll get into that later in the podcast. Why in particular for the beautiful girls of Ukraine, you have to come and spend, you know, at least three months a year here, in my opinion. Just before I get into all of this in today's vodka, I want to refer to the last vodka I recorded. I think I actually recorded it here in Hirsan. It was actually, I probably recorded over a month ago just takes a little bit of a lag sometimes uh, to get things up on the channel. And I made a podcast about why I predict that the mail order bride industry in Ukraine is doomed. And I got a lot of interesting comments underneath the video. And one of them was, well, actually, they're going to make more money because now they make their money out of all this letter writing stuff, right? So basically the PPL, what we call basically you, you write to someone on the internet you think it's a beautiful girl and usually it's not and you get scammed right let's just put it simply and <clears throat> that is true they are becoming more and more sophisticated about that it's really interesting as a lawyer right i used to work as a lawyer so i read recently the terms of a ppl site a paper letter site uh where guys are communicating they think they're talking to some uh girl woman here in uh ukraine and that she just loves them she's waiting for her western white knight to come and save her here but of course in reality you're probably not even talking to that girl uh almost certainly and i read the terms of service and they are amazing they actually delineated the entire scam and then get the guys to sign up to accept that they're being scammed. That's the level it's gone to. And that's for legal reasons, because a lot of these uh, PPL sites now, even though they focus on Ukraine or Russia or Eastern Europe, they're actually uh, located, they're, in, they're incorporated in countries like Cyprus, in countries like the UK, uh, I saw Malta in one of them, and they need to cover themselves legally for what they're doing because they're not making money out of matching people if they did that they wouldn't make very much money as much as nothing is nothing like what they actually make because i saw another youtuber who's a detective and he said that the industry is worth three to four billion dollars a year and the success rate for these big agencies is so for agencies in general he said 0.1 percent <laughs> and for big agencies is more like 0.01 percent successes imagine that been your chances right and you still have a big industry course it's based on yeah, scamming people in general They're, that's where the big money is made so they delineated that to sum it up very quickly for you that uh, they pay affiliates right? 
agencies a percentage of the money that they make from you if you happen to be paying one of these websites and they may be paying the girl that you're communicating with <laughs> basically scam number one you're basically paying just to talk to someone who's not interested she's getting paid for it and number two you may not actually be talking to the real person that may also happen i.e that there's just ego or, or a, let me call him something else i don't know uh Kirill from Hersan sitting there in his laptop talking to you and he's 50 year old, got a pop belly, he's a Ukrainian man and that's actually who you're talking to all the time, spending your money. So yes, that is where they're making the big money. Uh, the fact that they now have to delineate out the scam and make you sign for it, <laughs> basically, I think that's, and eventually law enforcement or the law is going to catch up with them and end that, maybe. Uh, and that would actually be the end of that. Always challenge these things with your car company if you are the victim of fraud in person here in Ukraine or online because that is the weakness. They need those credit card companies to accept them. Otherwise, it's hard to get your money. Uh, you can't, you're not sending them cash. Now, I know with cryptocurrency, that's probably what they're praying for, uh, hoping for it for the future is that crypto becomes universal and then you, know, it's, you can't have that uh, in general reverse. So that's hard. But at the moment, always challenge it on your card if you are the victim of fraud that's basically the simple rule of thumb you know this whole marriage agency business was all about a limited time frame right these guys in the west were coming over they basically tried to set up all these dates with prospective brides here and uh yeah they only have a week two weeks whatever it is and they have to pack in as many dates and get as much time with the woman because they're not going to live in ukraine they're not it's not easy for them to come back they're coming every week and that is basically what their model was built on probably 30 years ago as I said in the last podcast where it might even have been genuine and you do have some genuine matchmakers here in Ukraine but it should be a business basically the size of cottage industry basically like in the west um, and the thing is about a time deadline is you are under pressure so obviously it doesn't just apply to people come from marriages everything if you come over for a trip to Ukraine and you're hoping you're not interested in marriage for example and you just want to meet lots of beautiful women uh, maybe you're open to it in the long run, of course, uh, being getting married or having a long-term relationship, or maybe you just want lots of short-term ones here. Well, if you fly in, you have a very short deadline. And this is a large part of the problem. In a minute, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna outline the five reasons why this is problematic if you only come for the short time. It's really problematic if you're coming here for that short time period. And I have to say, I have, a client who did come with me here to Ukraine. Remember, this is Ukraine specific, not some of the other countries uh, in the former Soviet Union and where I go more with my clients. Um, here in Ukraine, I did have a client who came. We really streamlined everything. I vetted everyone who was meeting and he did meet someone and he did get married, in fact, right? So I'm kind of arguing a little bit against my own success, uh, you know, coaching guys. But other than that, other than my own client, came here to Ukraine with a uh, specific purpose, meaning someone in a short time, uh, timeline. I have only seen one guy do it. Um, and I should also, of course, emphasize, I mean, beautiful girl again, a seven or up for Ukraine, right? I've only seen one guy do it come from the West. And, you, you know, the amount of guys I've seen, who I mean, or guys who have, you know, who come up to me in the street here, for example, I see in bars and clubs. Um, my friends who come for short periods, or maybe acquaintances who know that I spend a lot of time here, they write to me, maybe up for a coffee or something. If it's a, a, you know, a guy in, I used to hang out maybe 10 years ago in, in, in Brussels, for example, in Belgium, when I worked there as a lawyer. And it's always the same story. They get almost nowhere. And actually, I remember when I was at this uh, Sodoman uh, concert in a pizza club in, a, in Odessa two summers ago, I was there with some friends. And, you know, it's absolutely packed. Sodoman is a big DJ. I think is originally from either Bosnia or Croatia or something and he grew up in Germany uh, or he lived in Germany for a long time but anyway, he's a big superstar and the whole place was packed absolutely packed the club and I'd say the majority were foreign guys and a lot of the hottest chicks from Odessa actually gone to the uh, the concert because it was such a big thing to see it's one of the biggest concerts of the summer and I remember looking at their faces most of them you know desperately trying to hit in on all the, the hotties around them and the hot chicks were just ignoring them. Absolutely. I thought these guys, success rate is like, busy like a marriage agency, 99.9% failure rate. No chance. So now I'm going to outline the five reasons 
why you need to come here and spend, you know, I say move here, it, you know, because I also help clients come here and they spend, you know, maybe they, they don't like the cold winter in Ukraine, so they just want to spend, say, four months of the year, but it's always a minimum of three months per year. Uh, that's the absolute minimum. So here, let's jump into the first reason you need to jump out of the sex tourist box, right? Only people who are interested in sex tourists in Ukraine are prostitutes, because that's what they do. That's how they do their business, that's how they make money. They need to find those uh, guys in order to obviously uh, monetize their sexual services. And number two, the scammers, because the scammers, well, they're not going to be probably, well, they're not going to sleep with a guy for, for, for money, but they're definitely going to be targeting to scam them. So basically, they're going to take the money without actually sleeping with them. Um, so yeah, you need to jump out of the box. And that's quite difficult, especially in cities like Kiev and Odessa. They get a lot of tourists and they get a lot of sex tourists as well. So guys want to fly in and basically pay for sex with lots of Ukrainian girls when they're here on the weekend. Uh, personally, I don't really care very much for prostitution as long as it's voluntary. I, it doesn't really bother me so much. I'm not interested in it. It doesn't affect me. Uh, but it does affect you if you're a foreign guy coming here because uh, a lot of local girls, especially the hotter girls, they're not, you know, a tourist is not a rare thing in Odessa and Kiev. And for sure, a sex tourist is not a rare thing and they do not want to be seen in the company of sex tourists because that will lower their status amongst their friends, assuming that she's a normal girl, which I assume you're, you're looking for. Uh, of course, she is that working girl, then prostitute, then of course, <laughs> she probably doesn't care about that. But anyways, uh, normal girls that you're trying to meet, they don't want to be associated with that for obvious reasons, because it affects their reputation in the city. Uh, and if they think there's a risk, <clears throat> because they don't know you, that you're one of those guys, they're not going to be interesting you so you need to be able to jump out of that box and one of the things is like if you say hey my name is Charlie from Chester in England and I'm here for the first time in Ukraine uh, on a weekend uh, doesn't really help why are you not Charlie from Chester who's the sex tourist so you got to make sure you have to jump out of that box and actually having a, a purpose to be in Ukraine actually being here a lot means that you're not a tourist and not a sex tourist you actually do something in Ukraine uh, no matter what that happens to be of course <clears throat> I always have my clients with this and always explain on uh, my high-level consultation group it's a Slavic Utopia Secrets Ukraine put a link to that down below uh, where I help guys move from three to 12 months a year here in Ukraine always emphasize that they need to get that set up uh, straight away that they actually are not here for a short period they need to be able to explain that very clearly when they meet women that actually they effectively live in Ukraine or they're going to spend a lot of time here so that's the first thing you want to jump out of that sex tourist box so the second box that you need to jump out of is kind of a, there's kind of two little boxes here right depending on which category you're going to fall into so if you're a younger guy in general there is a plethora of digital nomads who've come to Ukraine in the last say two years in particular right um, and they like they might be nice guys and everything but the value to a hottie in Ukraine of say Alex the Aussie who makes I don't know one to three K a month doing drop shipping and hangs out with lots of other foreign guys in the center of Kiev is pretty much zero she is not interested in that kind of guy he doesn't have any uh, socioeconomic status here in Ukraine for a hot girl a girl of course who may be a local four and like an English groupie sure that might work out but the beautiful girls not interested in that kind of guy in general you're gonna to have to do a lot in order to be over to be able to overcome that jump out it so you want to jump out of that box basically uh, and make sure that you're not put into that kind of like low socioeconomic uh, foreigner comes to Ukraine box but anyways digital nomads tend to in my experience be lumped into that uh, the second one it affects me usually guys are a bit older so we'll say those digital nomad guys are normally say 25 to 35 uh, 40 kind of age range, age range and uh, you have the wife hunter box which is guys probably from 35 to upwards indefinitely uh, that come to Ukraine looking for looking for a wife now you may actually be here for a while so you're out of that obviously sex tourist box but I like been put in the wife hunter box is another thing that is big turn off for the local beautiful women here because basically what you're communicating is I have no options at home I have scarcity and automatically you're gonna see low value to that kind of woman who is 
we're assuming a woman in demand. Now, of course, again, if it is an average looking single mom in her 30s, the father's nowhere to, you know, around, then yes, you know, being the wife hunter might be fine <laughs> because she needs a wife hunter probably in order to look after the kid. And actually, uh, you know, that might be a good match for her as well, uh, regardless of whether you're spending three months here or 12 months here. Uh, so again, we're talking about the beautiful women, the women are actually have a lot of options here. Again, that is not a very attractive uh, category to put in. So you need to jump out of those kind of, I guess, two boxes, but they, as they, they're kind of on the same level. You're not the sex tourist, but you are seen as like, uh, low value automatically because you put in those boxes. So definitely you need to also jump out of those. What I advise my clients to do, and it's actually most of the guys who are on my high level consultation group, is they are remote business owners or they have become independently wealthy uh, and they have lots of options. They just fly over because they're primarily interested in the women. They have other things that they're doing here. If you're spending two weeks here versus two months versus 10 months, you just obviously have proportionally linearly more time. So your chances are going to increase, you know, center is power, but they're just going to be more likely. So if you come for a short trip, we'll say two weeks, maybe come twice a year, maybe spend a month in total, small amount of time in order to actually meet the beautiful women here. And if you're spending like all year, like I have done in, um, yeah, I've been here all of 2021, then obviously, you know, you just have like eight, 10, 12 times more times, so you're gonna have eight, 10, 12 times more opportunities. On top of that, just as kind of a corollary to that point is a lot of Western guys when they come here, I guess I was also a victim of this when I first came to Ukraine, it would have been 2009 if, if I remember correctly, is there is a large beauty gap between the average Ukrainian woman and the average woman where you're almost certainly coming from. So I was coming from, I was living in Brussels at the time and um, yeah, there's definitely just a lot more beautiful women here. So again, this is that kind of like, you know, what's a, a, an eight here might be a 10 in Chester, uh, actually be off the, the charts in Chester, probably. Um, and it, the more time you, sp you spend here, the, your evaluation of beauty becomes local. So what do I mean by that? Basically, if you're hanging out in a country that's full of eight, nines and tens, well, actually those girls stop looking like eight, nines and tens. The curve kind of like shifts a bit and they start to look like five, six, and sevens. Uh, and that means that you become more like a local in terms of perception of beauty, which is great because uh, what most fo foreign guys do when they come here, they pedestalize the girls so much because the girls are better looking than the girls that they talk to back home. And they become across as needy and all the other things I talk about in my, you know, myriad of videos here on the channel. So if you are here for longer, you just kind of uh, become acclimatized to the beauty and then when you meet a girl who's an eight or nine in Ukraine the beautiful girls you don't get overwhelmed by the fact that she is a supermodel or whatever uh, like you would have maybe been the victim of uh, when you first come here and you come for just two weeks and you go back where there's a complete lack of beauty remember I went back to uh, my hometown in Ireland maybe it's about five six years ago uh, for a month or two maybe it was about two months I went back and it was pretty shocking, <laughs> the, the, the difference, right? I basically saw no women that I was attracted to, or very few, and most of those were immigrants I saw uh, in the two months uh, because I got the opposite, right? I come from everything been kind of, for me, what would be eight, nine, and 10 in Ireland, been just normal. And then, yeah, you go back and you're like, why is everyone so ugly? I also have a tip Thursday about that, like kind of the Ukraine beauty effect. I'll link it down below and it'll up in a car. So the fourth reason that you need to spend at least three months a year here, in my opinion, is it allows you to build value in Ukraine, right? This is something that maybe is a little bit more nuanced. Of course, I go into that in my, um, my high level concentration group and the whole program for moving to Ukraine. Uh, by the way, if you're not on my mailing list, this is how you get notified about it. Uh, then down below, there's going to be a link. It's going to be the five biggest mistakes made by foreign guys when they come to Ukraine. It's a free guide. Go click on it. You get that for free. And then you're on my free mailing list and you get notified when I open up my programs for uh, enrollment. And anyways, on demand, anyways, you can join uh, Slavic Utopia Secrets is down below as well. So just go and check that out. So you need to be building value. I actually have a purpose here. Be doing something locally. I have a friend from the UK and he has been effectively living here uh, for a few years and he's coming back and forth a lot in the beginning is three, you know, he's probably spending almost half a year here. And what he did is he took something that he was involved in back home, which was running 
and he set up a run day in Kiev. So he basically created value here in Ukraine for the people. That might seem a little bit, you know, simplistic. Uh, you just set up a fund day. What's the, you know, what, what's the value in that? Well, he's playing a role in civil society in effect. And that gives him the perception of him as having value, especially someone who's obviously interested in that. But even in general, like when he was getting asked by girls, he's meeting all oh, what you do. He, he was able to say, you know, I've set, I've set up this run day. I have a company here again, because he also had a company. Um, and he had obviously roots here and he was providing value. So he employs people, right? He creates value in Ukraine. And that's easier, obviously, if you're coming here and spending a lot of time. Like you don't have to set up a company like he did. That's obviously a lot more clear example. Probably the better example is the run day because he actually set something up. Uh, that's pretty easy to set up, I guess. Uh, you don't have to do run day every week. But, you know, when you're over here, you might have another hobby or interest that you really love and you can actually... Uh, do something for that community here and then create value so definitely that is uh, another big thing when you spend more time here is creating more value within Ukraine and that increases your value because despite what you might have heard all this obviously marketing of Ukrainian brides wanting to leave and all this BS the girls who want to leave Ukraine who are beautiful they're already gone it's not that hard with the days of Instagram <clears throat> and obviously Tinder with geotags. If they wanted to leave here, and also also hordes of horny foreigners to come here, they really wanted to get out of Ukraine. It's pretty easy to do. Also, Ukrainians have Schengen visa free. I go into that actually about my podcast about 10 things have changed in 10 years in Ukraine. Again, I'll link it down below in the description up on a card if you haven't seen it. Uh, definitely you know, understand Ukraine better than what's happening in the country. That is a very good video for you. Um, so basically what you find with a lot of beautiful girls who actually live in Ukraine nowadays is they love traveling almost universally but they don't actually really want to leave Ukraine necessarily like they might be open to with the right guy but they're not desperately trying to get out of here because if they were it's kind of ipso facto they already would have gone basically so uh, if you're actually playing a role here and creating some sort of value definitely moves you up in terms of the perception of your socioeconomic status here so let's roll into the fifth and final reason why you need to spend 3 to 12 months a year in Ukraine in order to meet and date and maybe have a long-term relationship with a beautiful Ukrainian woman. And that fifth reason is social circle. So kind of alluded a little bit, it's a little bit, I guess, a corollary of an earlier point as well. We're trying to jump out of that um, those boxes like being wife hunter and also the maybe the digital nomad i said like andrew the aussie uh for example well <clears throat> as you long you spend here the more friends you make now andy the aussie is probably hanging around with other english speaking uh digital nomads or kind of like upscale backpackers we'll say uh here in ukraine but that is not really as i said in the earlier point seen in terms of value of social economics right so really the hot girls are not going to find that particularly interesting uh to be involved in that a guy in that social circle in general of course again i said if she's not as hot uh then it's more likely she might find you interesting if you are in that but basically you need to be building a social circle that's of value now if you're only flying in for two weeks a year it's pretty hard to build up that social circle right basically i guess that's with the czar experience and with me <laughs> uh hiring me as a coach like when i did that in person i guess you get a lot of that straight away because you're able to plug yourself into it and i'll put a there's always a, a link to my application form for the czar experience down below so if you're interested that, of course go and apply um but for outside of that you probably can't just plug yourself into a social circle that easy that's going to be of high value and that takes time to build so that's why you need to spend more time here in order to build that social circle make the connections whether it's with local guys and girls who are you know moving in the right social circles themselves that are going to you know increase your value or the perception of your value amongst the ukrainian beauties here or it could be other foreigners uh i guess like me to a certain extent uh who also play a role here in ukraine society and are connected with the right people that are going to help you with that and, like i have a client who's moved here who's my client those are experience uh in-person experience twice and, and then as he's since uh moved to uh, ukraine and he has done that extremely extremely well like he's got it set up really to a t uh he has like really a lot of 
uh, Ukrainian friends who move in the right circles, whether male or female. Uh, he doesn't try to sleep with every Ukrainian beauty. He's pretty strategic about it, uh, pretty smart about it. Uh, so he's built up this social circle, and that's how he is able to get access over the long term to a lot of the really, really beautiful women in Ukraine because he's hanging out in the right social circles that those girls want to be in, right? So that is really the key to uh, building it up. And actually, I've been thinking about how to kind of formalize that and make it easier for the guys after they complete my, my program, obviously the high level consultation. Obviously, you know, they know the other guys on the program, but I will be launching very soon an actual group in Kiev that will be a social circle that you will be able to plug into as well. That will be one that we'll be meeting regularly. So if you are also interested in moving to Kiev in particular to start out with, make sure you're just on the, uh, the my free mailing list because I will send you the details there. I only publish or announce my new projects to my most loyal fans around that free mailing list. I don't uh, announce them here on the channel. So you need to be on that, of course, to stay informed and know when it's coming up. Um, in any case, uh, those are the five big reasons why you need to spend more than you know, a couple of weeks here per, per year in Ukraine if you want to meet the beautiful women. As I said, I don't have my own client um, who came on that short trip. And it was still about a, a week, 10 days. I've only met one foreign guy who did it. And he did manage to do it, and he had a lot of value to this girl. And um, yeah, he's actually, I think, now moved to Ukraine himself, <laughs> uh, even though they traveled a bit, but I think it was more to do with quarantine. So it can happen, but again, statistically, it's really, 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 really rare. And um, yeah, so that's basically what it is. If you want to increase your chances, don't fly in for a week to Ukraine in particular. Again, it might be different in other countries, but here, like just the chance of it working out for you are basically about the same as a marriage agency slim to none so that is the conclusion of today's vodka vodka smooth connor glide let me know down in the comments section below this video what you th think thought of it if you have any extra comments to make because in the last vodka i really enjoyed reading them so you know a lot of interesting insights into uh yeah the mail order bride industry in, in that case and hopefully in this case about moving for more time to ukraine in particular so i will see you in the very next video just before I go, I will say that I have been traveling quite a lot in the last month in this region. I have some really, I think, phenomenal vlogs coming out and they will be released in the next month to two months because um, they take a while to edit up. We went down to basically Crimea, as close as you can get to it here in Ukraine. That will actually be coming out very soon. Also went to Novokohovka and around made a special trip back to a special village and also here in here so i'm gonna have a vlog from here the city and what you can expect if you were to come and hang out here see you in the next video topobachina disvidanya from herson ukraine sar experience